What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. You all have been asking for and it is time to provide. Here we have a boat revival, but not only are we gonna be doing a boat revival, we have two really awesome channels that are gonna be doing it with us. How about you, I'm Hank from Hamiltonville Farm. I won't say how about you, but hey y'all, I'm Rev from Restoration. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. So here we have this 1985 McKee Craft 17.4 twin console, an extremely cool boat. 150 Yamaha. This boat has actually been off the water on land. I guess it's been in water since 2003, which is going to put us at about 18 years. And it is an absolute disaster, but we're going to get it running, clean it up and attempt to hit the water. All right, so we're back at the house with the boat. One thing you will notice, this motor is already up. Now, initially you can tell it sat most of its life down in the mud, which is actually good because what'll actually happen, you get rainwater here, it freezes and will bust your gear case. I think we're gonna be okay though. We need to go ahead and get it let down though so we can start checking the motor out. On your Yamas here, you have your manual tilt release. So before we even try tilting or anything, let's go ahead and release that. We'll pick the motor up take our stands out and get it dropped down. It's no pressure or it just releases. It just slowly right, releases. Pick it up a little bit. Oh, all right. And then, yep, it should just go on down. One's good. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. All right, so other than the big giant crazy nest, <laughs> you'll see it's actually extremely clean. It looks like it's probably a fairly low hour engine. It's obviously been sitting for a long time. We have just a little bit of corrosion, but it mostly wipes off. So I'm gonna say she doesn't look like she's really been in salt water. If you guys run saltwater boats, you know how crusty they can be. About as crusty as the boat here itself. <laughs> First thing, let's go ahead and get all of the spark plugs pulled. We'll check and see how the condition of our cylinders are. And we'll go ahead and shoot some lubricant down in there and we can start trying to turn this thing over. Well, that's scary. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> glad we got you so you can fix it. So as you can see, all six spark plugs look pretty good, but too good. Now, so the thing is when you have a brand new spark plug, it's actually coated until you run it and once you run it, so even if we do have rust, we wouldn't see it on the spark plug because it has no burn. So just be safe. We'll go ahead and soak these cylinders. Give them more than that. That's plenty. All right, so we've got a battery. Hank doesn't want me to. <laughs> but I'm going to clean up our terminals because they're looking a little crispy before we stick this battery in here. So on a lot of your older boat motors, if you don't actually turn the right RPM when cranking over, it will not fire. So it'll give you a false reading when you're checking for fire. So we want to do everything we can to verify. Get enough juice. We might need, yeah, we have enough juice. All right, so one thing we'll check for as we're putting this on is any kind of sparks, which you don't have. So what'll happen, a lot of times on these older engines and the reason they get parked, people don't realize the rectifier or regulators fail and actually weld together. And so if you yeah. have a spark here, you know that that has actually, sorry, I stuck it in my pocket already. Oh, <laughs> <off. laughs> 
that has failed but we didn't have any spark there so hopefully we're good see if this thing turns over check compression see if we got fire all right so we're gonna go ahead and check see if we can see somewhat of the health of this engine we're starting here with the number two cylinder on this motor it's gonna be one two three four five and six you're always gonna start with your top cylinder as far as the firing order goes let's go ahead and check see what we got That one's got, yeah, right at 100 pounds. Perfect. So that first cylinder there is actually at 100. So the biggest thing is we may have low numbers, especially to begin with, if you have a little bit of rust on those rings. Uh, but we just want to verify we don't have a completely dead cylinder. That's what really is going to upset us. <laughs> but we'll get it. Uh, we'll check all of these as long as they all look fairly even. We're not more than 15 to 20 percent off on our, uh, our range there. We should be good to go once we actually run it, if it runs. They should jump up a little bit. Right at 100. <laughs> right at 100. Beautiful. Right at 100. Right at 100. Hey, did y'all hear about that spark plug? There was a spark plug that wasn't doing its job. You know what happened to it? What? It got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Every single one of them did steady right at 100 pounds of pressure. So perfect. Beautiful. That liquid wrench is going to make it work though. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? It's time to see if we got fire. Who wants to get lit up? <laughs> Let's go ahead and do all of them. Um, because when you have a power pack go out on one of these, you can have, yeah, shoot. You know, even though we have fire on one, it's not like a car. It could be Jumping. all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and hopefully liquid rich it and flammable. This one, this one's good. Yeah. This side's good. Uh, good. Beautiful. Every one of them. Yeah. All the plugs are fired and they were obviously we got a little bit of rust around the ring here, so they're older plugs, but I think they're going to be okay. We'll verify B7HS10. On all of your Yamahas, uh, personal watercraft or boat engines, they actually really nicely lay out what spark plugs they take. So you never want to over tighten your spark plugs. What I like to do is run it down. You'll feel that compression ring actually seat and crush down, and then I normally do an eighth to a quarter turn. All right, before we go any farther, let's go ahead, pull that intake cover off, kind of get a night. Let's make sure there's not a huge nest in there that we're gonna suck down when we fire this thing up. Kind of get an idea of how everything looks in there. Oh, I love that. Still how many are gone? On that side. Oh, look at that, dude. Beautiful. Oh, man. Look, you couldn't eat off that thing. Now, I will tell you, what's gonna be fun. So what happens when these boat motors sit because you're a two stroke and you have oil in it, your fuel will evaporate. And I can about guarantee if we pull, we need to go ahead, let's pull the drain plugs on these carburetors, straight See, oil is gonna come out. You get some oil coming out of there. <laughs> Look at that old brick. Drum roll. Look at that. Ooh. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Let's pull all of those. Let's get some fresh fuel to this thing and attempt to flush it through a little bit. You don't have to open those up though. They won't take a few minutes to open up and clean through though. There you go. Pretty simple carburetors. There you go. That's a pretty small ball. That, that one's missing a, the gasket. Yeah. Oh, all together? Yeah. I don't think I felt it fall off. Look how clean it is. It looks like it probably had been washing straight through. Yep, both the bottoms were that way. Oh, yeah. shoot. The bottom on this side was clean, but it's got, it does have its... It does have the gasket, gasket. though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the bottom was clean. I bet that carburetor wasn't... That's. I bet that car, the floats are stuck on it or something. Yeah, that carburetor nice. wasn't running. If it's clean, it probably didn't have fuel in it. Yep, both sides. Yep, I think you are right. All right, so I've got some fresh fuel in our tank. Now I did go ahead and mix it just a little bit, although we are fuel injected or oil injected, that system does fail a lot of times and we don't want to burn this thing up. So first we'll go ahead and check this fuel filter. Woo, I smell that. 
Look at that. Mm. Good. Here you go. Have a no, whiff. No oil there. That's just uh, that's varnish. That's just bad varnish gas. <laughs> Woo, that stinks. Give you an idea of how long this thing's been sitting. We'll soak this out with some carb cleaner, and then we'll go ahead and hook our fuel line up, and we can go ahead and try to blow through the carburetors and potentially empty out the junk that's in there, but we will see. I mean, that number for y'all would be a disappointing day. <laughs> All right, so we did check the filter, but we do have a crack here, and with that, we will actually pull air. So I went ahead and we just run an inline filter here. Let's go ahead and start trying to push through and see what kind of crap stuff comes out of these carburetors as we're going to go ahead and start to try to run this thing you'll notice you do have this screen for some reason yamaha's even with their water pumps are good we don't know if this one's good we will probably end up having to change it they tend to not pick up water very well on a hose it's just something i've always had issues with so make sure you pull your screen and the one thing i can just about guarantee yep your pee hole there has a mud dauber nest in it completely blocked off we get we used to get calls all the time at the boat shop water pump isn't pumping and it would just be blocked off with a mud dauber. I'll probably pull it off from here and we'll let it spray out the backside to begin with and then clean that through. But let's go ahead and pull that grate, get our muffs on, get some water to this thing and try to crank it. All right, so you'll see on Rev's channel, we went ahead and pulled that off. Man, that was, a, I don't know what that mud dauber put in there. Some concrete or something. We got it all blown through. So if our water pump works, which probably won't, it'll pee and we'll know. All right, we have a slight weep on our bottom carburetor, just a little bit of overflow, but I think we'll be okay. It may clear up once we fire this thing off. All right. Y'all ready? We're ready. Thank you, Cross. Here we go. <laughs> Shoot, yeah, y'all. Well, that's why the carburetor wasn't overflowing that bad. Yeah. <laughs> we already the motor runs good. It runs completely out of gas. Oh, yeah, my that's goodness. Good. That's that's a yammy haw for you. Hey, 18 years, dude. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Is. It fires right up, oh. dude. I'll tell you what, it's like an old Ford. She put out a little smoke right starting off. Yeah, but, oh, awesome, yeah. Dude. We want to see a little bit on this one. Oh, yeah, yeah no, most yeah. certainly. <laughs> yeah, gotta burn that up. Oh, my goodness. Burn How right cool on. is that? That's awesome. Hi, <laughs> right, Michael. You want to tell them what's going on there? Whew. So you saw all that trash in there, that varnish. So what that's actually doing is hanging up our float valves. That was one thing I was afraid of. I knew we'd be probably fairly good, but we are going to have to get into those carburetors because they are nasty enough that we got some fuel issues. <laughs> so obviously one thing we are going to need to go out on the water is steering. Do we have any steering there? No. no so i've gone ahead and started loosening our nut here and if you watch as dave kicks it back and forth you can see our cable is actually moving now most of the time when you have locked up steering your cable is actually deteriorated and rusted through and stuck on the inside with it moving we know it is actually stuck and corroded up in that tilt tube right there which can be fun kind of a pain you see, I've also got this loose here. So what we're gonna have to do is get the motor freed up and then we're actually gonna have to beat this through. All right, cut it over. All right, that should be good. And so we've got our nut off here and back to the cable out, you can see that's not rust because that's stainless, but just nasty, nasty, nasty grease. So we'll try to, we open that up so we could soak from this side. 
will soak from this side. But we're just gonna have to beat it out. <laughs> We'll see how it. All right, so now it's just gonna be a matter of cleaning this up and then it's gonna be working it in, working it out, back and forth, rev up there. As I soak it down, it's just gonna be working it in and working it out. A little stiff. It works though, right? Oh yeah, that's the way you want it. Cool deal. All right, so obviously it seemed to actually run pretty decent. I was quite surprised, but we know how nasty and gunky those carburetors were. We definitely don't want to get out on the water and end up pulling some trash through there and getting stuck out on the water. We had that really bad overflowing carburetor on the top. And another thing that I always like to go ahead and take care of is these fuel pumps. Now, you can't actually remove the fuel pumps from here, pull them back, and they actually use vacuum pressure via the motor to actuate the fuel pumps, basically moving your fuel. And what you can do is pump up your primer bulb, and if you have bad diaphragms, it'll actually leak out the back. But as long as we know this thing is sat, as old as these are, they look to be the originals, I'm sure the first time we take it out and run it, they will go bad and we'll end up losing fuel pressure. So we do not want to do that. Let's go ahead all at the same time. You have four 10 millimeter nuts all the way around. Let's pull all three carburetors and fuel pumps off and get all of those replaced and rebuilt. So I'm going to go ahead we're going to let Rev pull all of these off. And of course you can go check his video out and you'll see those getting removed, cleaned and reinstalled. All right, now I know that this engine actually pumped water well when we first started it. It's quite surprisingly, but we know that this thing has been sitting for a long, long, long time. That water pump impeller is actually rubber, and you know rubber breaks down, and not only that, if you notice when we first cranked this thing, it was pumping mud, absolutely just straight mud everywhere. Especially because this thing was sitting down, you can see all the mud on the side. We don't want to take a chance. We want to be sure that entire gear case, the entire water passageway is cleaned out, clear. Go ahead and put a fresh impeller in this thing. So let's go ahead and get it dropped really quick. It's just six 15 millimeter bolts. There's a 10 millimeter that you get down through the top here. Yeah, to drop that trim tab and then you have another 15 up on the inside and this thing just comes right down. One thing you do got to be careful of at the front, I'll show you here. We actually have a little tube water pitot for your speedometer. We want to be careful not to break anything there because it actually is plastic. right there oh pff. JK it's not even hooked up <laughs> well, when you have a speedometer hooked up that's what you use and out we go all right you got the four 12 millimeter bolts around the top Wow that's a first stayed in there and that's because somebody went very crazy with the goop. So, you can see we don't have any broken off blades, but you notice something. This thing is hard as a rock. So some of these aren't gonna reach their full potential and you're not gonna get the water pressure that you're supposed to. We will go ahead and get the key popped out there and I normally do that by tapping down and underneath it, like so. And then we can pull that bottom plate and check our water passageway, which thankfully looks pretty good. 
you'll always go, I'm sure you know, you always go clockwise. Mm -hmm. So when I go, what I'll do is I'll take this, turn it the opposite to go ahead and start my impeller. And down we go. So this fella right here works using something called a Cressa wrench. And I think that's the only thing he uses. I try to, that's correct, yeah. We found the right one for him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, I love it, man. That thing, that's a big one right there now. Rev's got our carburetors back on there. Our new fuel pumps are installed. And we're ready to fire this thing off. Verify the water pump, the new water pump pumps as it should. And we're gonna get this thing to the lake. What y'all think? Woohoo, let's do this thing. It is time to roadkill style this boat. No, we're not going to clean it out. We're not going to fix the seats. Not even going to put tires on it. Yeah, those look nice, but those are the most dry rotted tires I think I've ever seen. Wow. It'll be all right though, right guys? We'll uh, we'll keep it up. We'll keep it under 100 on the way there. It'll do good. All right. So we are here at actually this isn't the shop I used to work at. John is now in a new facility. But the gentleman I used to work for, I gotta show you all these really quick. You see all the crazy jet ski videos online. You guys have got to be careful. Look at this. Brand new skis. Both of these are completely totaled. Engines ripped off their brackets. Nothing savable hardly. Thankfully, the teenagers that were on these were unharmed, but I just, y'all gotta be careful on those things. Right? That's right, man. Gotta be careful. <laughs> so you don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so one thing we've grabbed here, the, the fluid is clean, but it appears to be a little low. And obviously we don't want to burn up our gear case. So I've gone and snatched a pump and a drain pan. Let's go ahead and pump this up and get it topped off. Nice clean fluid. It's a little low. There, there she goes. Probably only a quarter quart. But still, better be safe than sorry. Now we can go get ourselves some good is oh i see this is the boss of the shop cynthia her hubby and that will squirt <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna come get a bunch of stuff cynthia's gonna give me a good deal on it yes yes i am <laughs> best best boat store in the upstate there you go <laughs> All right, so John's tracking us down. Fuel filter, went ahead and get a new mix right cup. Uh, what kind of oil should I run with that one? TCW3. TCW3. Cool deal. So she's ringing me up. We got all kinds of stuff. I don't know how much these are though. Those are free 30. 30? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for letting me intrude, man. Yes, sir. See y'all. Bye, Michael. <laughs> All right, so we're at Mile Creek County Park. Well, I don't know. We might not want to tell them that. <laughs> if there ever was a roadkill boat, I think we're in it. Good grief. She's going to run like a top, though. Let's go put her in, see how my backing up skills are. See how she does. This is where we pick on people who can't back the trailer down into the boat ramp, right?
drain plugs are in. Flood it out. Let me uh we're gonna run out of battery. Well that worked out great, y'all. Yeah, how was yeah. the how was the first run on the water? Alright, y'all do this. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure this out. Alright, what could we be? Will you click the choke real quick? If you don't mind, it's uh on choke. Um, let me make sure we put those on correctly. Oh boy. Oh, I guess we should tighten that. Yeah. those battery cables keep getting a little hot. We'll see. We'll see what you do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good Let's shape. go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. Rev, you bring your water skis? <laughs> I'm ready to go, man. <laughs> size 12. Oh man. She's running good. Look at these seats, y'all. I think this thing's still recording. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, see how strong the P-stream is and everything now? Yeah. It's a difference with it in the water. All right, y'all, here's the question. We know it runs. We know it floats. You want to drive? The question okay. is, will she plane out? Will she boogie down? Let's find out. All right, here we go. Oh, that's steering stuff. I know. <laughs> we'll work we got it out. Captain Wagner at the uh, controls today. What in the world? Is it trimming? It's not going down. It is don't it? trim down. Can you uh? Maybe maybe on the side of the motor there. There. Look, y'all, we floating, y'all, we floating. Down when you went down. She is. Nope. Uh, just in the top here. Okay. Just tells the drain. Y'all ready? Woo. Yeah. I'm a little nervous. We'll get out of the no wake here and see what she wants to do. All right, y'all. It's beautiful lake. We already saw those bass, so my problem is why didn't I bring a pole? But hey, we're ready to rumble. You ready?
All right, y'all. Well, the question was, will this thing run and will it float? It not only runs, floats, but gets down in boogies. It does. We had an awesome time. It was incredible working with this fella here, Hank and David. If you haven't already, go check out Hank's channel, Hamiltonville Farms and David's Restoration. Give them a subscribe and check out some of the awesome stuff they have going on. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. Later on, we'll have a full detail on this boat. Peace out. Catch y'all on the flip side.